Nah, this is all I know. It's that simple. This is all I know. Um, every, uh, one year, it was more of a 3-4 variation, uh, but always traditional four down, four big boys up front that can get after it, corners that can play man-to-man, play man coverage, play zone, bring some pressure, and just let guys play. You know, take the thinking out of it, let them play. Um, I think the key thing, especially in college football, you know, the young guys and guys in general is their eyes and details and technique. And as we keep fine-tuning that, obviously just seven through the, through seven practices, we'll get be, we'll get better. Uh, I just told Caleb walking through, you know, and he said, Coach, rough practice. I, said, oh, I know, I know, I feel it. <laughs> but I told him we're going to be that much better in the fall because these guys would now be able to watch film. They have a playbook. They have things to study. They'll be able to run their own practices in the summer. Um, so for me, to be honest, to answer your question, it, it's very similar to what I've done my whole life. Yeah, look, I knew Coach Hill was bringing some funk to the building, but he got some funk over there on offense. I mean, a lot of stuff, stuff that you really don't see in college. You know, most guys line up three by one, two by two. They keep it basic left and right. Uh, he challenges our eyes. He challenges us to communicate our guys prior did I have to talk as much? Now we have to communicate front line, back seven, front seven, entire defense has to be on the same page. It's going to make these guys better football players. We're not going to see that in the Pac-12. Maybe one or two teams. So when they just line up and play, it's going to be shocking to our guys, but it's a great teaching lesson this spring for our guys to really challenge themselves mentally. I think our D-line. You know, I think... Last year at this time of spring, we didn't even have no D linemen. Probably had four or five guys. Now we got four guys, and you watch what they're doing to our offensive line, how they're getting after it. And probably the MVP of our spring so far has been Robert Rodriguez and, and how, what he's been able to do with those guys. And just you see their, their, their eyes, you know, they're bright and they're, they're eager to learn. So I think from that standpoint, I would say that's the bright spot. I think the negative is obviously just playing, you know, younger guys and guys playing in new positions, new roles. Um, and again, I'm gonna keep going to expectations. You know, we expect Shari Croswell to be one of the best DBs. We expect Jackie Jones to be one of the better cornerbacks in national in uh, college football, along with Chase Lucas, and same thing with our backers. So, there's no more diapers. There's no more spoon-fed uh, players. These guys need to now grow up and be men, and we're doing that. It was good. We went to the funeral yesterday, went to the service. Myself, Coach Edwards, Gene Boyd, Marcus Walker, Jermaine Lole, TJ, um, Jermaine Lole, and um, Chase Lucas were the guys we took with us. Uh, we went there to the service of the viewing. Uh, just to support the family, is very grateful for us being there. Obviously, myself and Coach Edwards spoke. Um, Merlin, you know, at the moment, smiled. We hugged, embraced, and then um, at the end of it, the whole family just kind of looked at us and said, thank you. All we can do is be for him. There's nothing we can say, do. Um, there's a grieving moment for him. The good part about it, we have spring break now. Merlin's going to be back home soon, back here in Arizona, and, and he'll get back into the groove of things. And we just got to adjust. You know, we, we, what we told his father's no different. Um, at the beginning of time, back in January of 2018, until what we told him yesterday in the family, that we got his back, that we're going to help him grow on and off the field. And family first, and, and that's what we try to show and showcase and, and prove. I think it's good. I mean, Achari, when I obviously coached him and recruited him, he's a guy that he's a middle field, middle fielder, you know, and he can track the ball. And last year, obviously, wasn't the year that he expected and we expected for him. That's changed. But when those guys have vision, have their eyes in the right place, and they're able to make plays, they're backed up off the ball, they're playing top down, meaning they have enough depth to now go out and make plays. And look, Achari and the Twins and those guys, they're very rangy, long guys, 6'1", six 6'0", six guys, 200-plus that are very fast and athletic. And when our corners are being aggressive the way they're being aggressive, that ball's going to float a little bit. I mean, at this time last year, Jaden didn't throw interception. I gave him a trash can today and told him, go ahead and start practicing on that because <laughs> that's what them balls look right now, trash. But uh, that's a good challenge that we got. That's, that's the fun part we got about one another. And that's our challenge because Jaden makes us better because he makes some throws out there that you say, wow. And then we make some plays that we say, wow. And, it, and it's going to make us a better unit and team overall. He turns a little man child, isn't he? You know, he's a little he was Bambi last year. Bambi's like a little elk and moose now. He got you know, he's he's looking pretty. But um 
You know what? He was a kid that we knew was going to come along eventually. We didn't know how quick the weight was going to come on. Joe did an amazing job in the weight room with him. And I think to his credit, Amiri embraced it. Not only that, he's embraced being a big body guy now. I heard Coach Rodriguez talk about that earlier this week. He embraced his power. I mean, when you're 6'6 with that arm length and now at 260 and what he's doing in the weight room, he's now showcasing that on the field. And it's happening a year early for us. We expect it next year, and, and it's going to be a pleasant surprise if he can continue to grow that way. Yeah, I mean, Axe Berlin and Butler. <laughs> That's what I did to them, and they responded well. They, they'll come out of it. It's tough love. They know. I, I told them from 7 to 12, I'm going to be their worst nightmare. At 12.01, we're okay. And it's about that time. We'll have lunch together and have ice cream. But, I mean, I'm going to be hell on wheels on them. I expect the best. I expect those guys to come and play. I brought them in to take jobs. I, I brought them in to take Berlin Robertson's job. They're, that's the expectations in our group. Is it going to happen? I don't know. If they make up their mind, they'll push them. That'll make our unit better. Look, I only got seven linebackers on scholarship. That's all we need. And they should be the toughest, baddest SOBs on the field. Special teams, scout team, defense practice, that's the expectations. They know that from when I recruit them. I didn't hold no punches. So they're okay. You know, they get a little, at the first day, they were probably shocked. You know, the language shocked them. But as it went on, you know, I you know, pat them on the butt and loved them up. But then that's how it is. You beat a hammer, but you never break the nail through the coffin. I think a great compliment to what we have with Jack Jones and Chase Lucas, two anchors at the corner, and you got this guy that's in the slot, very sharp, very smart, true nickel, new true nickel uh, uh, DB, but can play on the outside. But obviously, this gives him an opportunity to play. Um, when you're in that position, you got it's difficult because you have to cover every route, right? You got the entire route tree, and you got to be a run defender, get your big boy pads on, right? So strap up. And, he, and he's the good, the good part about Jordan is he's so smart. He does a good job of just analyzing, seeing, talking, communicating. Um, he was a guy early on last year we thought was going to play a lot and had an injury, got nicked up. Um, but he showcased exactly what we thought. Obviously, you know, his dad played, so he has that football IQ, that fo football savviness about himself. Um, it's a great compliment. It'll be interesting to see how really the competition gets going. You know, T. Lee has, had a good practice today. Those young guys, they compete, man. So it, it's fun just to watch that secondary really get after it. We've got a bunch of good DBs. Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> I'm biased. I do. But, the, but, but that's, that's really part of, part of the NFL model, so to speak, is to go with those, uh, with the bloodline. Yeah, the good genes. You got guys that are football. They, they were born on the grass, right? They were born watching ball. That's all they know. They hear the language. They hear the terminology. Uh, when Chad Johnson gets here, when he was here the other day, it's very similar to him. When he was, You just hear him picking up so quickly. Um, and it's not a knock against anybody else. It's just when you're, it's just it's something different about those guys. And not all of them are the ones you want, but the ones I think we're recruiting and we have on our roster, that, that's our mindset, obviously, recruiting. We will look at those. There's some guys in this year class uh, that I'm recruiting that I either play with their fathers or I know them uh, pretty well. And we'll keep going on that. If we get one or two a year, that's kind of our plan. That's been the plan since I've gotten here. I don't think it'll change. Well, I think what you see is, you know, again, I'll go back to last year where we could barely fill two groups. We were barely too deep. And now we're getting these guys in. Um, they look the part. They look like they can come in and play from day one. Um, we're getting bigger, taller, longer, stronger, faster, smarter. Um, as they keep playing early and early on, we'll get bigger and better players. But I think the key part is we got guys that want to come in and compete. Nobody's talking about red shirt, and that's like, that's like a no-no word around here. You know, they want to come in there. They expect to come in and play and contribute right away. And that's the kind of passionate players we want. And that grows when they're around our players when they come on campus. You know, we had a bunch of kids out there today on unofficial visits, and you can see. Yeah, I'm good. I don't have no names. But, you know, they can see them. They're, they're like, they want to be a part of this, you know, and, and that's different than what we've had in the springs prior. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it, college is faster than the NFL. And Marvin's learned that the tempo is faster than what you're used to. But uh, it's been good. We obviously, we, we talk to every morning that we meet as a staff. Um, but if Marvin was a DC or I was by myself, DC by myself, it's very similar to what we were on. 
I, I would have the same mindset, um, the same approach. Uh, he coached me, obviously, in my second year, and there were things I took from him and learned from other coordinators, but the philosophy, the concepts, how to teach the game, how to get these guys' eyes, hands in the right place, their feet in the right place, and to do everything the right way all the time. And then you hear every coach talk about it, but again, that's just the mindset of it. And I think when Marvin and I are in the room and we talk, there might be a time he catches me, I can catch him and we correct one another or throw an idea out there that we didn't think about. Again, because the college game is so different than the NFL game. And Marvin has to understand that. I think he's still learning that part of it as well. Um, and it goes hand in hand. I think it's good compliments, yin and yang. Obviously, I'm probably the upper, and, and he, today he was good, though. He got up after him a little bit. You know, he, his, his voice raised a little bit. He's on his toy, a toe. So it's good. It's good not to be always be the hammer and have two guys that see the game the same well and can work well together. That's good. It's good. There's been a lot of mental mistakes where we haven't got the exact close call or the guy shipped it over. And, oh, man, you, I got that guy. Who got that guy? One of those deals. Um, but, again, just training your eyes. Again, this is a we're, – we're in, we're in school session, right? We're, we're learning. We're trying to absorb and soak in all the information and knowledge that we're getting. And we have an offense that is challenging you, again, mentally with your eyes, your brains, your ears, to receive, to deliver – to receive back, it's it, it makes your defense from 1 through 26 or 42 that we have on defense much better because the twos have to pay attention because most part our ones get the same and twos get the same reps. And when me and Marvin talk about it, sometimes you can beat the offense a little bit too by formations. Let's go for a slot, for example. You get two receivers to one side. Our guys show, you know, hey, look, it's closed the other direction. You know what I mean? So it's things like that that we didn't have prior because – we were so symmetric, left and right. Now these guys have to figure it out. And again, there's been mistakes, but the thing that I love about it is making these guys talk and be vocal. And that's making a guy like Caleb McCullough, who wants to come in here and talk like that real soft, have to say with his voice, his bass. He has to put some bass in his voice. And you heard Marvin get after him today about that. And that's man, all good things, all good things. And again, so much teaching coming out of this spring that we will have for the summer going to the training camp will make it better. You can see it, huh? Yeah. It's, it's wide open. Yeah. Does that make it pretty straightforward? Straightforward. Guys, you know? No fair dodging. Who's supposed to be there? Who you think? If you ask it, it's you. You know, that's how it is most of the time. And most of the time it's the backers or the safeties. But I think that's the good part about it because we don't have so much movement. We do have some games and stunts up front, and we bring some pressures where there's movement. But for the most part, just whoop that man in front of you. My job is to whoop you and put my head in that gap or that gap. No peekaboo. Uh -uh. No, we don't do that. Just right there, left or right. Keep it very simple. That way, when you come to the sideline, you can make better adjustments. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, since I've been here, um, but I would just say last year, it was, it was kind of black and white what we did. You know, when the call was set, it was set, and we just ran with it. Uh, well, this year it can change with motion shifts, trades. Um, the corners have to talk, which is crazy. Most corners, they're on their island. They're out there by themselves. But, no, they have to talk. They have to communicate to the backers and the safety. So, again, when most corners have this kind of vision, now we have to open this bad boy up, right? We're not the horse track. You know, we're not running in the derby. We need to open up and see everything that's going on. And, again, I think everybody, it makes everybody accountable, right? If you're wrong, be wrong loud. Be vocal about it. Own it. You hear us tell our guys, own it. You can be wrong, but as long as all 11 are wrong, we're good. Can't be 10 and we're 9, we'll be off.